Hi, Ginny. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. I'm very warm. But apart from that, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk about this picture in particular. Oh, I you did sound that. Good. <laughs> work with Indigo uh, in the current issue of Love. So tell me a little bit about how um, this relationship works. I mean, we'd never met before, um, and it was, Katie had sort of suggested someone that she'd met, and she was like, you know, I think she's kind of got the same aesthetic as you, and is really sort of quite natural in her photos. There's something really raw and energetic and quite passionate about her work. Um, and then I met her and we like immediately clicked. For those who don't know you or, or might not know you yet, could you tell me a little bit more about your background and um, professional and personal if you want? I studied art history at um, uni, so I'm very good at references. Um, referencing, I have a very sort of like maybe analytical, slightly offbeat vibe and I'm very passionate about sort of the history of fashion and where it came from and sort of just images and pop culture in general. When I was a kid I used to sort of tear out like, like images I wanted in magazines and make collages and that's kind of how I I constantly describe you know my thought process and how I kind of got into the industry like that. I then went on to assist loads of different people um, and then came to love and assisted Katie for a couple of years, which was really fun. Um, it taught me a lot, actually. Like, more than I realised. I don't think until I left I sort of realised how many sort of skills and um, things I picked up, sort of from working on big commercial, with big commercial clients to, like, really small productions and then doing things that were, like, a little bit offbeat and then working on shows, which is my favourite thing to do. Um, and now I'm, yeah, I'm sort of having this weird lot of sort of long overdue rebirth. <laughs> yeah. So like been, been, been everybody's next big thing for, for a minute. And now it's like actually happening, which is great. And uh, do you remember the first uh, shoot you've styled? Actually, no, I remember it was like a really strange test shoot that we'd sort of like, like, I bought some clothes from a charity shop and like worked with a photographer who had met on a, on a shoot and we like used the studio on the weekend and got this new face who turned up with her mum and it was all, I mean, I dread to think of what the pictures looked at now, but I remember it all being very exciting. Just the idea of being able to play and communicate through clothes I thought was really powerful. I think my big first shoot I did for ID was like something that was going to go online and they loved it so much they ran it in the magazine they were like we love it so we just, wow. we just gave you 12 pages and I was like what <laughs> and I, was, I remember being very excited about that and my mum actually being quite excited do you prefer working with models or celebrities a bit I it depends it depends on the celebs because sometimes you can meet people they're not what they are in your head and it's sort of you know, and they come with lots of sort of prerequisites, and then some, but then some people are super easy. I shot Kylie Minogue, which I was so excited about because I was like, it's Kylie. <laughs> but, but yeah, that was really fun. And like my mum seeing that and being like, oh my god, you did that? That's crazy. Um, she was really excited about that. Working with Kylie Minogue and celebrities, and uh, and for love, obviously, this particular uh, editorial, um, being a black creative getting to those places and getting uh, to those achievements, achieving those things, how hard was it for you? Gosh, it's been a, it's been a struggle. It's been a 10 year kind of like, it's a weird struggle because I think everybody has a perception if you're sort of visible online or you're visible in, in some way that everything's sort of hunky dory, but really behind the scenes, it's a bit of a shit show and you're like, oh, kind of can't make rent. Trying to sort of satisfy the commercial needs that you need to do when you're in the creative industry. Then I always found it difficult because I looked around and I was like, you know, the reason I'm popular is because there's not many of me around. I remember looking around and thinking, well, there's not that many black female stylists that like run to mind and I can sort of name them and I, I know them all. Do you know what I mean? We're all in like kind of like a small little group. Um, so it's been it's been quite hard because getting to the certain levels that I want to get to and, you know, the aesthetics that I have and the taste level that I have, the higher you sort of climb up the chain, the fewer and fewer black people there are. You can't be what you can't see. And I, when I was growing up, I always thought it was odd that I didn't see myself reflected in the pages of Vogue and in the, you know, in the magazines that I read and sort of studied and was like all about. 
And also, did you feel like you probably were pushed into a box at some point or not at all? Because when we think of black creatives, usually it's like, you know, the word that comes is usually urban, which basically means streetwear yes. and, you know, um, but there are many black creatives, you know, dealing with high fashion brands and, and, you know, super big fashion houses. So did you feel at some point that you, you had to fit in a certain box? Yeah, definitely. I just, well, yeah, I think people that people struggle really hard to understand my aesthetic because I'm very much like into a hype Williams sort of super luxe, super extravagant kind of visually that's what my eye is drawn to like I, I and I want to create moments like that those things where you're like oh my god do you remember when so and so was wearing that that's what I want to create but you get pigeonholed because you look a certain way that you can only deal with a certain clientele and a certain aesthetic whereas I think fashion for me is you know it's somebody wearing an old t-shirt that they found in a thrift store with some really expensive com and some Dr. Martins and like, you know, some earrings that they got, got from God knows where, like that's how I dress. And I wanted to see that. Um, but it's really hit hard for people to understand. I'm a black girl that grew up listening to punk and to grunge and, you know, was very in, you know, part of that grunge aesthetic and was really into like Radiohead and stuff like that. But also religiously, um, listen to Biggie and Tupac and all of those kind of things. Like I'm a hybrid of loads of things and I just wanted yeah. to see more people like that. What has been for you the biggest hurdle? Um, I think the biggest hurdle for me is not being, not fitting into the very narrow idea of black excellence. I, you know, I'm a darker skinned woman, not sample size either. So I, I don't double up as a model. People want you to sort of be so much more. Um, but then they also don't, they, you know, they're like, we want you to be yourself, but not like that. Do you know what I mean? I've been in situations where people have been, you know, if you were skinnier, this would probably be a little bit easier for you to kind of get where you need to go. And me having to sort of take it on board and kind of not sort of guide that part of my life just to make another part of my life easier because that shouldn't how it shouldn't be how it, yeah. it is. I want to ask you about the quarantine and the lockdown. Um, did it stop you? Did, were you bored with, you know, uh, creative? I was, it was weird. I think it's because it hit me at a place in my life where I wasn't feeling very good. Lockdown was really quite liberating for me because I had been, I'd been self-isolating before everybody else anyway. I'd had loads of sort of weird tragedies that had happened and I wasn't in a great place. I was really frustrated work-wise as well. I was just kind of like saying yes to things that I didn't want to do. So when I, so we went into lockdown, I was a bit like, well, now it's time for me to just not, I don't have a choice because everything's kind of taken away and you can kind of focus on where you want to be and the type of person you want to be and like, you know, do a bit of healing and like, working out, working on my mental health, and also like re-fell in love with fashion again. Um, which young designers are you uh, fond of right now? Oh gosh, you know who I love? Um, Bianca Saunders, Moa, obviously. She has a, such a clear indication of who she is, and that is always really refreshing to see. You know, I love Pia Moss, I love um, Telfar, I love all of those kind of brands. Really. I, w I mean, I just want everyone to make things in bigger sizes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I think it's the myth that people who are who are bigger don't like high-end things. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like, all I do is like, you know, I buy a lot of Ashley Williams, I buy a lot of Marcus Armida, and it's because they, they can sometimes cut things slightly bigger than everybody else. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just, I, I go with things like that. And I, I want to see more of that. I just want to see more people doing that instead of me having to sort of think of like things I like. One last question. Do you consider yourself a feminist? And if uh, no, why? If yes, why? I've got quite a few friends and sometimes they say they don't consider themselves a feminist and I have to sort of really bite my tongue because I think we should be trying to fight equality. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me and uh, congrats again on your oh. work with us and looking forward to, to see what else we'll be doing together. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.